Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you all here. Um, if you're um, making your way in and stepping inside chapel, I would ask you to take your seat. Um, I have a few things that I would like to share with you this morning as we uh, get ready to worship God and to uh, enter into a time of opening our hearts to God's word. So this morning, uh, we will be led by our new student band, NSB. Uh, so these are freshmen and in new incoming students who have come into our, our campus who are uh, being part of this uh, worship team. And so we're so excited to uh, have them be part of our rotation in our times of worship together. So we're excited about that. Uh, this morning, we will be hearing from Tiffany Hazel. <laughs> Tiffany Hazel is our chapel intern and our student voice uh, in the chapel preaching team and so excited to hear the ways in which she will be speaking into our chapel theme and as she explores the book of Esther with us this morning. Tonight, Chad Coons, who is the <laughs> surf team captain and uh, we're looking forward to having him with us uh, tonight as he shares his faith story. Um, I do have uh, some updates uh, next week, we are entering into Renewal Week, uh, which has uh, always been a special time set apart for a time of deepening and uh, engagement and opening our hearts just a little bit more to the ways in which God would, uh, would draw us in into deeper relationship with, with God and with each other. And so um, we had an initial speaker. His name was Brian Fry. He's a pastor in in uh, he's a pastor in in the Phoenix area. He will no longer uh, be able to be with us due to a family emergency. And so would would encourage you all to continue to pray uh, for him and his family during this time. Uh, we also have some uh, speakers who have uh, willingly and, and excitingly uh, been able to step in into our Renewal Week time. And so we will be having Pastor Tara Beth Leach from uh, Pasadena First Church of the Nazarene. And we also have Pastor Mark Chase from Monrovia Fellowship. And so we're excited to have both of them with us to share God's word, to lead us in this time of Renewal Week as we enter in. And so uh, this will be a, a great space for us, a great time for us again, to open up our hearts to the ways in which God wants to speak to us. So I'm going to invite Noelle Doctorian, who is our ASB Spiritual Life Director, and she'll be leading us into a word of prayer. And so would love if we could just go ahead and pause um, our conversations and, and, and be in a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts for a time of worship this morning. So let us pray. God, I want to thank you for this week. Thank you for being with us despite how heavy this week can be. I pray for Tiffany and Chad as they are our speakers today and that we just evidently see how you've worked through their lives and that through the message that you've given them that they that we receive and we open our hearts for what you have to say for us each individually. I also pray for Brian Fry. I pray for his family. I pray that you bring peace and comfort in difficult times and that we would gather together in prayer for them and to, for, to let him know that we're walking alongside him in this journey, despite if we have met him or not, but that he knows that your presence is there with him and his family in this hard time. As we continue in worship, be with us. Help us to realize your presence and remember that you're here today. I pray this in your name. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Esther chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in this palace, you will escape when all of the Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time like this. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, good morning. <laughs> Maybe you've heard this question before. When a tree falls in the forest and no one is around, does it actually make a sound? For some people, it's a really deep question. Or maybe it doesn't matter. Perhaps you're tempted today to say that it doesn't matter. But it is an interesting question 
and it relates to our story today. This morning, we are going to look at the story of Esther. When reading the story of Esther, God is never mentioned. He's never spoken about or heard from. Now, don't misunderstand. It is an incredible story. But have you ever heard of any books of the Bible in the Old Testament or the New that God isn't even mentioned? Like a tree falling in the forest, does it really even make a noise? I mean, if God is not mentioned, is he even there? We know that even though we aren't in close proximity with the falling tree, it still makes a noise. There's plenty of evidence that states that a tree falling in the forest creates a noise. You could say that because God isn't mentioned in the Old Testament or the book of Esther, then he isn't actually there or heard from. I have found that he is actually all over the Old Testament, especially in the book of Esther. This morning, we're going to hear a tree falling in the forest. Now let me give you a quick overview of the story of Esther. There were four major characters in this story, Esther, Mordecai, Haman, and the king. This book was set in a time when the people of God were in exile. The Persians had conquered the Jewish people, and Esther, a young Jewish girl, lost her parents during the exile. They died, and she moved in with her uncle Mordecai. Now, as we begin in chapter 1, the king is searching for a new queen. Esther, who didn't reveal her nationality at the time of this choosing, was chosen. And one day, Mordecai, her uncle, showed great loyalty to the king by warning him of a plot against him by one of his guards. And as a result, the king gave favor to Mordecai. Haman, a Persian, and remember the Persians were attacked or attacked the Jews. This Persian, he was the highest ranking official and all the other officials bowed down to him for respect. But Mordecai, he didn't. Haman was enraged when he heard this news and he, so he researched Mordecai's nationality, which then he found out that he was a Jew. He believed then that all the Jews throughout the entire empire were to be killed for Mordecai's disobedience. So Haman came up with a plan, a plan to kill all the Jewish people in the entire empire. Now, as we jump into chapter 4, Mordecai and Esther were communicating with each other because of the news of the Jews' annihilation. It's not a coincidence that Esther is in this place with the king. Instead, she perhaps was made queen for just a time as this. She tells Mordecai that what will happen next is against the law because the queen at the time, uh, she was not allowed to go to the presence of the king unless she was summoned. She tells, she tells Mordecai, if I must die, I must die. Just imagine the scene. Think about how much bravery this took to break the law that she was placed under in a time where people were enslaved and her voice was looked over because of who she was. She laid down her own life to save her people. That's pretty brave. Jumping back to the story, Haman by now had made plans to kill Mordecai and equally enslave and kill all the Jewish people. Now once Esther had the courage to go to the king and tell him about Haman's plan, the tables turned. Haman thought he had a foolproof plan. His plan was foiled, though, when the king learned about how Haman tricked him. And the king decided then to kill Haman, ironically, the same way Haman was planning on killing Mordecai. Esther's people were saved. The king found favor in Esther as well as Mordecai. And this is all because of Esther's bravery and trust in God that she was able to save her people by risking her life. And as a result, the king promoted Mordecai second in command, as well as bringing Esther favor. And Queen Esther, she also continued to find favor in the king as well and played an important role to save the Jewish people and following in the kingdom. Gotta admit, it's a pretty intense story. What irony. Now, I have two points for us today from our story, and these points might be a little challenging for you. 
So bear with me because they contain so much truth for us. The first point is, God is sovereign. Maybe that's an unknown word for you. Maybe you're not understanding what I'm saying. But what it means, what sovereignty means of how God is sovereign, God is here. And he is working in my life and in your life, even when we can't see him. When we can't see God or even when we try to push him away, God makes noise. You might not believe me or you might have doubts, but listen to me closely because this is truth. God, whom I love and believe in, is sovereign. God is present and is working in both my life and in your life. Now look at Colossians 1 with me. Colossians 1, 15 through 17. We have it on the screen for you. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we cannot see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities, and the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. God says, I am that I am, and he is the I am. God works in ways in our lives that we cannot see. The Jewish people were the people of God, the chosen people. The, even in exile, though, when things seemed to be at their worst, God used the most unlikely people to bring hope into the world. Esther was just a young Jewish girl. In that time, she certainly was not in any position of power. Yet, God used her courage, her gifts, and her newfound position to influence the king and to save her people. Have you ever wondered where God's at? We live in such a broken world with a broken political system and where people are suffering and dealing with all kinds of troubles. Perhaps in your own life, brokenness is nothing new. Divorced parents, loved ones who have passed away, dealing with depression or mental illness, and you just want to shout out, God, where are you? This incredible story of Esther teaches us that God is right here. God is ever present in our lives, and God is working in ways that we can't always see clearly. He uses the most unlikely people and at times the most unlikely circumstances to reveal his faithfulness and love for us. To show us that God will be faithful and to show us that we can trust him. And even to show us that God will be faithful even when we're not. So that leads me to my second point today. And remember, first, God is sovereign. And second, you can Trust God. It's easy to look at Esther's story and think, well, that's great. She was called to save her people. That's a nice story. But how can that apply to my own life? I'm not some strong-willed, bold person like Esther. It seems, how can I just put my full trust in God? Believe me, it seems that God isn't always there for me. Difficult things still happen. I'm just here trying to live my life, and these people up here in chapel just keep talking about how great God is. But seriously, how can God use me? I'm just me. There is a mindset that I think we're stuck in today, that we aren't a chosen people. The people in the Bible, like Esther or Moses or Jonah, you name it, they are the chosen people that we hear about, not me. They were chosen by God to be used and to make a difference, like saving a nation. But how can God use me? My favorite verse in the book of Esther is what we read earlier today. Esther 4, 13 through 14. 
Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in this palace, you will escape when all other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just a time as this. My friends, perhaps you were chosen for just a time as this. I don't want you to believe that even for a minute that God cannot work through you. Maybe in this moment you don't even see God at work in your life and you're asking, where is God? Now women in the room, if I could talk to you real quick. This story of Esther is such an incredible example for us. She models such boldness and courage and a great love for God. Esther teaches us that you can trust God. Now, men in the room, I wasn't going to leave you behind. I don't want you to think that today we're only talking about women for women. Just because this story is about a woman, that shouldn't make you pass over this. Because perhaps, men, you were chosen for just a time as this. You can trust him. Because we're all invited. In our lives, we can believe that God is not there. Or maybe has abandoned us. But can I say it again? He is ever present in our lives. I struggle trusting with God. Especially when I came to college. During high school, I was ready to come to college. I thought it was going to be life-changing and ten times better than high school. Indeed, it has been. It's been pretty great. Except after my freshman year, I almost didn't come back to Loma. I felt lost. I thought I didn't have a place here. I didn't trust God. And I asked myself, how can I be used here at Loma? I'm nothing special. God is obviously leaving me high and dry. Clearly things aren't going the way I expected them to be. It's not like I was hoping for all of us to sing songs and being happy all the time. I was desperate. I thought it would be a little bit easier. I began to tune out and become distant with my roommates and my friends. I was ready that summer after freshman year to move. Yet, I had forgotten that I was meant to be here, right here. I was ready to come to college, and I thought if I trusted God then, before I came to Loma, perhaps I could trust him again. The next year when I came back, I had the opportunity to jump into discipleship ministries, and I asked myself, Perhaps you were chosen for just a time as this. And when I came back, it's not like life was any easier. Everything didn't just fall into place because I chose to stay. But it did result in some great relationships and opportunities that led me here to speaking to you today. You see, perhaps God is leading you somewhere that you cannot see. But it is good. God can use all of us in many different ways throughout our different majors, our minors, ages, passions, nationalities, backgrounds, journeys of life. We're all college students here, mostly. And we can sometimes convince ourselves that we can't make a change, at least not until we're older, you know, real adults. In 1 Timothy 4.12, it says this, don't let anyone think less of you because, of, because you are young. But be set an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, in your faith, and your purity. I desire to see people take their next step towards Christ. I would encourage you 
to share your story and have conversations about how God is working in your lives and then how God can use you. It is good to talk with another friend, person, professor about how God is working in their lives as well. It opens our eyes to see the wonders that God does in our world. My hope and prayer is that each of us will see God move in our lives and in the lives of others. However, we can't see God move unless we take that step to trust in him. Do you know that you can trust God? Yeah, yeah. Because he is right here. If you have been feeling and you've been trying to carry those burdens that are just giving you a backache and you feel like you can't do it anymore or you feel like God has been absolutely absent in your life, I want to remind you, God is sovereign because he is working for your good in ways that you cannot see. And you can trust him because God is with us. God is inviting you and me to take steps towards him because he is right here. I wanna challenge each of us this morning to take that next step. Maybe take your first step. Like a tree falling in the forest, it is making noise. God is making noise in our school and in our lives. I see it everywhere. I see it here when we're worshiping together. I see it in the calf. I see it down calf lane. I see it in the dorms and the apartments. You may not hear it, but he is right here. And not just in brown, obviously. He goes with us in every part of our day. Maybe you want to pray today and renew your trust in God this morning. Or even put your trust in him for the first time. I ask, can we pray for you? As we close this morning, if you want to come and pray, myself and a couple of our campus pastors would love to pray for you. The altars are open and we invite you to come. You might even be willing to pray with a friend. So bring a buddy. This is something we do every Wednesday to create space for you to respond and have opportunities to confess and give thanks. Maybe you're being called up to the altars because you have a need or a need for someone else. You're carrying those burdens that are just hurting you. The altar, it is a great place, a sacred place to come and to speak and to hear from God. Now, as I close this in prayer, you can come and kneel. Now remember, God is sovereign and you can trust him. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your word that you've given us. And I just pray right now, Lord, that you, you move in each of these students' lives, that God, they're able to see you and to walk with you, Lord, that no matter what they're going through, no matter what trouble they think they're in, Lord, no matter what pressure's holding on their shoulders and giving them just hurt, that Lord, we know that you're there because you're right here. God, as we go from this place into our classes and into midterms and into this next weekend, Lord, that we continue just to fight and to continually think of these words, Lord, of how you are sovereign, how you're continually in our lives working and how we can make that decision to trust you. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you for today and for each of these students that are sitting in here today. We give you all the praise. Amen.
and you are welcome to come.